robots. Listen for main ideas and listen for details. Okay, let's get started. First, I'd like to review a basic definition of robot. Then we'll look at some examples of robots in history. And finally, we'll look at how robots are being used today. One simple way to define robot is to say it's a machine, a mechanism that can move automatically or by itself. Many people think a robot needs to look or think like a human, but as you'll see in my examples, that's not always true. Sometimes robots look like people, but not always, okay? Now, let's look at some robots through history. You may think that the idea of robots is new, but actually people have imagined robots for a really long time. Thousands of years ago, the ancient Greeks wrote stories about robots. These robots included mechanical people made of gold and tables that could walk around by themselves. Around 400 BCE, that's about 2,400 years ago, a Greek mathematician named Archytas designed and built a real robot, a mechanical bird that he called the pigeon. The pigeon was powered by steam, and it could actually fly, though not very far. In 1495, Leonardo da Vinci, the famous Italian artist and inventor, designed the first human-like robot. This robot was a knight. In da Vinci's drawings, the knight could sit up and move its arms and legs and head like a human. However, we don't know if he ever actually constructed this robot. Then, in uh, 1898, Nikola Tesla created the first radio-controlled robot. Tesla was a famous scientist from Croatia who worked on many inventions, including the first radio. His robot was a boat that was powered by a battery. When people first saw Tesla's boat moving by itself, they thought he was controlling it with his mind, but he was actually controlling it with radio signals. Finally, in the late 1940s, something very significant happened, the computer. Since the 1940s, scientists have been able to use computers to make robots that can be programmed, that can be controlled by a computer brain. The first programmable robot was created in, in 1954 by George Duvall. Duvall is an American inventor who created some of the first robots to be used in industry, in factories. So today, robots are programmable, they're controlled by computers. And today's robots must be able to do two things in general. First, they have to be able to obtain information from their environment. That means robots need to have senses. They have to be able to see and feel, hear, or even smell and taste things. And then, they need to do something with that information. Perform a task, like pick up an object and move it. For example, a robot used in a car factory might be programmed by a computer to see a car part in front of it. And then it can pick up that part and connect it to another part of the car. Today, robots do lots of work for people, and most of that work is what we call the three Ds. Dull, dirty, and dangerous. In other words, most robots do work for people that people don't either want to do or they can't do. The main way that we use robots today is in industry, mostly in factories. And in fact, 90% of the robots in use today are in factories. Now, robots are very useful in factories because they can do work that is very dull, very boring. They can do the same task again and again and again without getting tired or bored. For example, chocolate factory robots pick up chocolates and put them into boxes. It's impossible for a person to do a task like this as well as a robot. I mean, a robot can do this 20,000 times in one eight-hour workday. 20,000 times. I don't think any of us could do that. Robots are also used in industry to perform work that is too dirty or dangerous for humans, such as cleaning up nuclear waste. A second way that robots are used is an exploration. Robots are used to explore and get information from places that are dangerous or impossible for people to visit. For example, robots are used to explore volcanoes, where it's very hot and unsafe or in Antarctica, where it's very cold. And robots are 
also very important for exploring other planets like Mars. These exploring robots are able to take pictures and gather information so that we can learn more about these places without actually going there. Robots are also becoming more common for personal use. Many people use robots to vacuum their homes or as toys just to play with. In 2004, about 2 million personal robots were used worldwide, and that number has continued to go up. For instance, the government of South Korea hopes to have a personal robot in every Korean home by the year 2013. And now, scientists are working on robots that can drive our cars for us, or take care of us when we are sick or old, or just be our friends. Now that's an interesting thought, isn't it? So that's a brief history of robots, and some examples of how we use robots today. For the next time, I'd like you to imagine what kind of robots we'll be using in the future.